In 2011 the second generation of the model appeared, which turned out to be a crossover that changed the previous frame design. Let's see how the Koreans managed to avoid the common in such cases, childhood illnesses. Surprisingly, there are still no massive and serious claims to this car. From scratch, the Koreans managed to create a fashionable and quite honest car for their money, a hefty safety margin of which clearly runs counter to the traditionally low residual value of Sanyong cars. However, it was not without drawbacks either. In Russia, new Akyon was assembled in Vladivostok from car kits. There were two engines, gasoline and diesel, both 2.0 liter, the same power of 149 horsepower. At first, a more powerful 175 horsepower turbo diesel was also offered, but it was quickly abandoned due to low demand. It's a shame, because it is he who is considered the most successful. Meanwhile, there are few complaints about the remaining engines, and besides, they are not critical. For the gasoline engine, the main complaint was extraneous sounds and clanging when starting a cold engine. The valve timing regulator is capricious, about 12,000 rubles, or an extended timing chain, a replacement kit for which can be bought at a price of 15,000 rubles. The peak of complaints falls on cars with 100,000 mileage. However, there are plenty of cars with high mileage, which this fate has passed. For a diesel engine, a complaint about the useless resource of the exhaust gas temperature sensor on the turbocharger is considered on duty. Admiring the burning, check, with a run of up to 50,000 kilometers is pain and despondency. Six steppers, mechanics, and automatic, manifest themselves in different ways. There are few complaints about the MCP. But repairs after 100,000 kilometers, it happens, overtakes the Australian automatic transmission attached to the diesel engine. With a gasoline engine, a Hyundai automatic works much more successfully. But the suspension does not indulge in reliability. Knocking and demanding tightening of fasteners and replacements begins already at the smallest runs. Problems, however, are solved with little bloodshed. The main consumables are the CB joint boot, front wheel bearings and, of course, the stabilizer struts. The body and paintwork hold up no better, but no worse than the average modern level without obvious flaws. Decorative chrome fades in a couple of winters, and Acteon owners have learned to put up with the finish and build quality of the cabin. The car is actually cheap. Such is the demand from her. The creaking of the driver's seat, crickets, an unimportant fit of the plastic trim, a quickly peeling steering wheel and non-critical electrical failures, it's all there. However, this does not make the car less attractive for its money in the secondary market. Transmission. The Australian machine has jolts when shifting to second gear and after stopping. Changing the firmware of the box ECU, alas, does not help everyone. The problem remains when changing the oil in the box, it must be at least 1.5 liters. The cost of repairing an automatic transmission traditionally rolls over 100,000 rubles. There are complaints about the untimely connection of the all-wheel drive. Engine. One of the main disadvantages of gasoline engines is the winter start, in which the speed floats, and then the engine stalls. Mechanics rightly sin on the wrong angle of installation of the fuel rail, air leakage and sweating near the nozzles were noticed. A common ailment of a diesel engine is a dying turbine exhaust gas temperature sensor, 7,000 rubles, every 30 to 50,000 kilometers. Suspension. The cost of a new CB joint boot is small, about a thousand, but they need to be changed often. The front wheel bearings are replaced as an assembly with the hub, from 50 hundred rubles. Need to look after the rear stabilizer bracket. Thrust bearings are also weak, 2,000 rubles, replacement for 60,000 kilometers. Body. Body and paint quality are not a contraindication to buying a car. The metal on the chips blooms quickly, but the rust converter solves the problems. The rear fenders are most vulnerable to chipping at the top of the rear lights. Probably, with the diagonal load, the fifth door walks and rubs. Electric. There are definitely some problems with the rear lighting. Most likely, the lanterns overheat, which often burst. Even the upper brake light was not an exception, which sometimes even manages to melt the fifth door washer nozzle, which is mounted in the lantern. 